Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, my dear students of Abdullah Shami High School? My friends, my colleagues, I hope life is treating you well. I know the confinement is not that easy, but you've got to, to see it from a positive eye. It was also a good opportunity to develop our new techniques of teaching, ICT teaching, online teaching. We have learned new things. And also it's a new skill for us as teachers and for my students to learn from far away and online. It's not that easy. I know face-to-face -face teaching is something uh, warm and effective, but we have no choice. We've got to go on learning and living. Okay? Okay, let's be positive. So today's lesson is brain drain, listen, listening and uh, some reading from Unit 10. Take it to English. Good, we start, Bismillah. So, brain drain, let's turn or turn in brain drain into brain gain. We have brain drain. Again, I do, I do remind you, brain drain is the opposite of brain gain. Hijrat al-admira wa aksuha stirja wa ribh al-admira. Take it to English, page 144. One, four, five, listening skill. Okay, let's get involved. Which countries do, do African skilled and ta talented professionals immigrate to? Where do they go mostly, in your opinion? Yes? Mm -hmm. Very good, let's see. Yes, most skilled, skilled professionals immigrate to Europe countries, especially France, Germany, but now there's a new tendency towards Canada, the US, and Eastern Europe, like China, Russia, Ukraine, and many other countries. Good. Two, is the, this immigration positive or negative for Africa and host countries? Can you explain? What do you think? Do you think immigration is positive for Morocco or negative? Is it positive for Europe or negative? Can you explain? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, for Africa it's negative because the money invested on education of these brains go vain. They go vain. Why the host countries, Dual Mustaqbila, Europa, America, Unfortunately, receive ready-made brains and exploit them in the prosperity of their technology and economy. This is very sad and uh, unfortunate. Good. Now, read the text below and answer these questions. Five minutes. Born in Akuri, a village in African country, Philip Emigwili was the oldest in his family of nine children. His family neighbors considered him as a prodigy because of his skills as a math student. His father spent a significant amount of time nurturing his son's education. By the time Emigwili reached high school, his facility with numbers had earned him the nickname of calculus. calculus. Fifteen months after Emigwali's high school education, the civil war broke out and his family fled to the eastern part of the country. He found himself drafted into the army of the seceding state Biafra. Okay, Emigwali's family lived in a refugee camp. Okay, refugee camp, remember? Refugees. Mm -hmm. Until the war ended in 1970, more than half a million of Biafrans died of starvation during the civil war. Philip Emigwali traveled to the US in 1974 to attend Oregon State University. Upon his arrival in the course of one week, he used a telephone 
visited a library and saw a computer for the first time. Remember, he earned his degree in mathematics in 1977, holds a second master from the University of Maryland in applied mathematics. A diploma of the master in mathematics is not easy. While attending the University of Michigan on doctoral fellowship in 1980, Emigo Lee began work on a project to use computers to help identify and tap underground oil reservoirs. He grew up in his homeland, an oil-rich country, very rich with petroleum. And he was someone who both understood computers and how to drill for oil. The drill, Tanqiban Lhaz. Why did Emigoli's neighbors consider him a prodigy, in your opinion? Why, in your opinion? Yes, because he was so brilliant at maths. What did people nickname him? They nicknamed him Calculus. Why did his family live in a refugee camp? Yes, because of the civil war. Great. What was his doctoral project? Yes, let's see. Using computer to identify under earth oil. Very good. Now find that in the text the synonym of genius in paragraph one. What do you think? Born in Kiwir, the legion of in country. Emigwali was the oldest in family. His family and neighbors consider him as prodigy because of his skills. Yes, great. Prodigy. Genius means prodigy. Question two. Famin, paragraph two. Fifteen months later, after Emigwali's high school education began, the civil war, Harul Aliya and Fajarat and his family fled to the eastern part of the country. He finds drafted in the army of the seceding state of Africa. Emigwali's family lived in a refugee camp until the war ended. More than half a million of Biafrans died of starvation during the civil war. So famine, starvation, Majal. Very good. Attended Hadara, paragraph 3. Yes. Good. Joined. He joined the university. Okay, where is it? Question four. Motherland, paragraph four. Yes. Homeland. Mother country, homeland. Very good. Now we are going to listen. In. Now listen and answer. What if what is Philip Emigulis country of origin? On purpose, the text I gave you. I omitted the country so that you can answer this question. So please listen attentively and answer this question. Unit 10, Brain Drain. Do skilled Africans have the moral obligation to remain and work in Africa? I believe those with skills should be encouraged and rewarded to stay, work and raise their families in Africa. When that happens, a large middle class will be created then a true renaissance will occur. Should skilled African immigrants be required to return to Africa? I believe controlling immigration will be very difficult. Instead, I recommend the United Nations impose a brain gain tax upon those nations benefiting from the brain drain. I wonder, huh, is brain drain a form of modern slavery? 
By the end of the 21st century, people will have different sensibilities and will describe it as modern-day slavery. In the 19th century, which was an agricultural age, the U.S. economy needed strong hands to pick cotton, and the young and strong were forced into slavery. In the 21st century, which is an information age, the U.S. economy needs persons with extraordinary ability and the best and brightest are lured with green card visas. Africans who are illiterate or HIV positive are automatically denied American visas. Do you believe that the brain drain can be reversed? This is what I'm concerned with. As I always say, brain drain is a complex and multi-dimensional problem that can be reversed into brain gain. India is now reversing its brain drain and turning it into brain gain. I believe Africa can do the same, but unless we reverse it, the dream of an African renaissance will remain vague. Why have you lived in the United States for 30 continuous years? Africa has beaten at my soul since I left. My roots are still in Africa. My house is filled with Africana, food, paintings, music and clothes to remind me of Africa. I long to visit the motherland, but I must confess that when Africa called me to return home, I couldn't answer that call. The reason is that I work on creating new knowledge that could be used to redesign supercomputers. The most powerful supercomputers cost $120 million each, and Nigeria could not afford to buy me one. Can you tell me what your last word to African governments is? Finally, I would like to say that millions of high-tech jobs can be performed from Africa but may instead be lost to India. We must identify the millions of jobs that will be more profitable when transferred from the United States to Africa. Doing so will enable us to create a brain drain from the United States and convert it to a brain gain for Africa. Thank you, Dr. Phillips, for accepting to do this interview. My pleasure. Well then, so what is his origin, Emigoli? This is uh, the picture of Emigoli, Philip Emigoli, famous engineer in computing. And the, the text that you have heard is a, an interview between him and the journalist. So the origin, very good, he is from Nigeria. Good, we move. Now listen again and choose the correct answer. Unit 10, Brain Drain. Do skilled Africans have the moral obligation to remain and work in Africa? I believe those with skills should be encouraged and rewarded to stay, work and raise their families in Africa. When that happens, a large middle class will be created. Then, a true renaissance will occur. Should skilled African immigrants be required to return to Africa? I believe controlling immigration will be very difficult. Instead, I recommend the United Nations impose a brain gain tax upon those nations benefiting from the brain drain. I wonder, huh, is brain drain a form of modern slavery? By the end of the 21st century, People will have different sensibilities and will describe it as modern-day slavery. In the 19th century, which was an agricultural age, the U.S. economy needed strong hands to pick cotton, and the young and strong were forced into slavery. In the 21st century, which is an information age, the U.S. economy needs persons with extraordinary ability and the best and brightest are lured with green card visas. Africans who are illiterate or HIV positive are automatically denied American visas. 
Do you believe that the brain drain can be reversed? This is what I'm concerned with. As I always say, brain drain is a complex and multi-dimensional problem that can be reversed into brain gain. India is now reversing its brain drain and turning it into brain gain. I believe Africa can do the same, but unless we reverse it, the dream of an African renaissance will remain vague. Why have you lived in the United States for 30 continuous years? Africa has been at my soul since I left. My roots are still in Africa. My house is filled with Africana, food, paintings, music and clothes to remind me of Africa. I long to visit the motherland, but I must confess that when Africa called me to return home, I couldn't answer that call. The reason is that I work on creating new knowledge that could be used to redesign supercomputers. The most powerful supercomputers cost $120 million each, and Nigeria could not afford to buy me one. Can you tell me what your last word to African governments is? Finally, I would like to say that millions of high-tech jobs can be performed from Africa, but may instead be lost to India. We must identify the millions of jobs that will be more profitable when transferred from the United States to Africa. Doing so will enable us to create a brain drain from the United States and convert it to a brain gain for Africa. Thank you, Dr. Phillips, for accepting to do this interview. Very My good. pleasure. Very good. Now, what do you think? Does the interview describe the brain drain phenomenon, explain brain drain's effects, stop brain drain Africa, or reverse brain drain into brain gain? Mm -hmm. Very good. It's a reversing brain drain, brain gain, brain drain into brain drain. This is the main thing. Good. Now, how can the UN help in controlling brain drain, in your opinion? Are you going to listen again? Or you just answer? Unit 10. Brain drain. So the UN can help control brain drain. Do skilled brain Africans control. have the moral obligation to remain and work in Africa? I believe those with skills should be encouraged and rewarded to stay, work, and raise their families in Africa. When that happens, a large middle class will be created. Then, a true renaissance will occur. Should skilled African immigrants be required to return to Africa? I believe controlling immigration will be very difficult. Instead, I recommend the United Nations impose a brain gain tax upon those nations benefiting from the brain drain. I wonder, huh, is brain drain a form of modern slavery? By the end of the 21st century, people will have different sensibilities and will describe it as modern day slavery. In the 19th century, which was an agricultural age, the U.S. economy needed strong hands to pick cotton and the young and strong were forced into slavery. In the 21st century, which is an information age, the U.S. economy needs persons with extraordinary ability and the best and brightest are lured with green card visas. Africans who are illiterate or HIV positive are automatically denied American visas. Do you believe that the brain drain can be reversed? This is what I'm concerned with. As I always say, brain drain is a complex and multi-dimensional problem that can be reversed into brain gain. India is now reversing its brain drain and turning it into brain gain. I believe Africa can do the same, but unless we reverse it, the dream of an African renaissance will remain vague. 
Why have you lived in the United States for 30 continuous years? Africa has beaten at my soul since I left. My roots are still in Africa. My house is filled with Africana, food, paintings, music and clothes to remind me of Africa. I long to visit the motherland, but I must confess that when Africa called me to return home, I couldn't answer that call. The reason is that I work on creating new knowledge that could be used to redesign supercomputers. The most powerful supercomputers cost $120 million each, and Nigeria could not afford to buy me one. Can you tell me what your last word to African governments is? Finally, I would like to say that millions of high-tech jobs can be performed from Africa, but may instead be lost to India. We must identify the millions of jobs that will be more profitable when transferred from the United States to Africa. Doing so will enable us to create a brain drain from the United States and convert it to a brain gain for Africa. Thank you, Dr. Phillips, for accepting to do this interview. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you for listening. So I have uh, anticipated the first answer. How can the UN help in controlling brain drain? The UN can help controlling brain drain by imposing a brain drain tax on those nations benefiting from it. Question two, is brain drain responsible for Africa's problems? What do you think? Yeah? Not only Africa, but also people who immigrate should be blamed in part. How does Philip Emigoli compare brain drain to slavery? Slavery, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, he said that in the 19th century, economy needed strong hands. Okay, they need strong lamila. But now, in the 21st century, economy needs persons with extraordinary abilities. It's like a modern slavery. Why can't the speaker re return to his homeland, Nigeria, in your view? Yes, because in his, he is working on creating new knowledge that can be used to redesign supercomputer and his home country cannot afford to buy him one, to buy him one because the supercomputers costs more than one million dollars. Okay, very good. Now we move to the last one. Yes, please. Look at these caricatures and give your opinion. What do you think of this opinion? Look at this one. We have an African continent. Okay. So please ruminate your ideas and try to give your opinion. Thank you so much and see you again. Stay home and stay safe.